right, so welcome back. So we're just going to look at a couple of CSS properties just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page. The one that I picked for us to look at is font. Uh, there's nothing sacred about font, except for most web pages have words. So font is a good thing to understand because it will help distinguish your page um, and try to give it a custom look and feel that you would like. So one of the things that I would recommend is right on the title slide here, there's a link uh, to W3Schools. Uh, so W3 is the organization that, that makes these things. W3Schools is an unrelated entity that makes website that very cleverly picked the name to be W3Schools uh, so that people go look at their stuff for, uh, for content. If you go to this link, uh, it'll talk to you about font. It'll tell you kind of the difference between some fonts, like what is serif and sans serif? Uh, what are some examples of font families? Um, how do these rules kind of look and work together? And to be honest, I think most things uh, that, that you want to figure out if you're going for the details are going to be on this page as opposed to me telling you every, every single detail, right? So some of the things that I will point out, though, is that there's a lot of font uh, rules. There's also a lot of font-related things. Uh, one of them is text align. So one of the first things that you're going to choose for properties is uh, whether you want somebody left right or center justified and you can see that there's just a property for for left right and center called text align so that's definitely one you should know and we'll play with that in the exercises there's also a whole series of font hyphen something um, these are actually independent properties but there are shortcut ways that you can set them all at the same time with a single rule um, and they try to identify things that are independent but can be set at the same time with this hyphen approach. So there's font family, font size, you can read the rest of the list that are separate properties, uh, but they can be set all at the same time. Let's talk about them separately first. So font family um, <clears throat> should be obvious what it is. Uh, it lets you set what type of font it is. This one is actually a list of items. Uh, there's a lot of properties in CSS that do this where it's, it's not just a number, um, it's just a, it's a list of things. Whenever you have something that's a list, it's really easy. You just comma separate it and it works out great. Um, so here's an example of a paragraph tag that is going to be Times New Roman if it can, but if somehow for some reason Times New Roman is not available, uh, it'll have a backup font, uh, which is a specific font again. And then if some reason that's not available, uh, the last rule is just give me any old serif font you can. So this works out just fine and dandy. And to be honest, we know that every browser supports Times New Roman, so it's not going to get past that. Uh, the others are just going to not even be important. Uh, but you can specify a list in case you want to do something really fancy and then kind of have your backups after that. Another thing I wanted to point out here is the use of double quotes. Um, double quotes are only necessary um, if the font name has a space in it. So if there's a space in the font name, you have to put it in double quotes. Uh, otherwise, bad things happen, right? Because it sees that space and it doesn't know what to do with it, right? So I just thought I'd mention that. You can, if you would like, uh, just put the whole thing in double quotes, uh, and that actually works too. But personally, I like to put it around just the item that had the space because that's what it's really doing. You see so many examples on the web that do nonsensical things uh, that it's important to know why there's sometimes quotes and why there's not. Uh, font sizes can be specified in a number of different ways. Uh, one way is through a number of pixels. Um, another option is uh, what's called EM, which refers to the height of the overall font. Uh, the nice thing about an EM rule is that it's relative um, to whatever it would have been before. So one thing that people like to do, I never do this, but, but I recommend it to students, is that they set on the page uh, a font for the page and then all of the other rules use EMs if they want to be bigger than that default font by something or smaller. Um, it's just a floating point number. The nice thing about using this structure is then you can change the one number on your, on your body tag and then everybody will get bigger and smaller together. So you have the freedom to set them specifically, uh, but you also have this ability uh, to change your whole page uh, all at once if you want to get it a bigger or smaller font. I recommend that, but to be honest, I never remember to do it. And to be honest, I use points a lot uh, in the exercises you'll see from me. But it is better to use this recommended approach. Other rules in here, I won't go through them all. Um, so you can set a font style, uh, which lets something be like normal or italic or bold. So that's the font style rule. There's also font weight. Font weight is typically a word. Uh, so normal is the default. 
bold is what gets used a lot. You can actually just specify a number if you want, and then you can specify the amount of boldness that you would like. And then there are other rules, such as font height, um, which are confusing because they can be set with font, the shorthand property, but they didn't start with font hyphen. This is a legacy problem. Uh, so font uh, line height existed before the, the font shorthand. So it is part of the font rules, um, except for it uses a different name. Right, which is confusing. So I've talked a lot about this uh, font shorthand. And so all these properties uh, can be set by just using uh, font. And you can actually specify in one rule uh, all these different things. Um, and note that included in that is actually the line height as well. So let's look at some examples of that. So in this example, uh, the required components are that you have to have a size. You also have to have a font family. And then other things are optional. You'll notice that in the shorthand, all we did is we just left a space between them. And you have to look up what order these things are expected to come in. Uh, but you can add other things as well. So in this example below, uh, we've added, I think this one is a style rule. Uh, also, just to mention it, if like after the font, you leave a, a line like this and you were to say like, you know, 2.5 EM, um, what this would do is the thing before the line would be the font size and then the thing after it would be the line height. And the interesting thing is you're actually recommended to use the shorthand properties. And for some reason, it's more efficient for the browser. So if you're going to set even two properties, you should always use the font shorthand. And of course, if you're going to set more than just two, uh, then it's that much better. So it is actually a performance benefit uh, to use the font property. All right, as, uh, as per usual, you can learn some things from me, uh, but I think you're going to learn the most from actually doing some exercises. Uh, so we've got a couple font exercises. Uh, just to share, there's an exercise 0, 1, and 2. Um, right now, only work exercise 1 and 0. Um, number 2, uh, we will work later um, once we've done some of the more advanced things. So go work those two exercises and then come back and we'll do some more stuff together. All right, see you next time.